So if you look right there, that's actually an Orion capsule. So that's the capsule we're going to be going back to the moon in. They have that capsule there for the astronauts to practice getting in and out of the capsule. There's a space shuttle in which all the astronauts will sit. They will be lying down here. So what you have here is that uh, International Space Station mock modules are inside the swimming pool. Okay, so uh, when you go inside the swimming pool, you go inside a module. It looks and feels exactly like how it would be in the, inside the ISS. That's so cool. Welcome to NASA. NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration is an independent agency of the US government. Like we have ISRO in India, we have NASA in the US. And what you see here is a taxi plane. And what it does is that it actually carries space shuttles to the space. The space shuttle is a small plane that can actually go outside and enter back to the Earth. So this is NASA campus. Why do I say campus? Because the whole area, which is more than 1600 acres, has been built as though it is a college campus. The story behind this is that this whole area belonged to Rice University. And then NASA asked for this land and Rice University sold this entire piece of land that it owned just for $20 to NASA on two conditions. The first condition was that they will build their entire facility as though they are college buildings. Because if NASA fails, they will have to return the entire land back to Rice University and then they will be able to use these buildings for college campus. And this college campus would be called Rice University Clear Lake. But then what ended up happening is that NASA succeeded big time and therefore NASA kept the land. And this is the place from where all the missions of NASA are controlled. And this is a tour of NASA mission control and NASA astronaut training. The flight deck of a shuttle. So it will be It's very difficult to climb up. Yeah. And this is astronaut seats. And this is what they used to fly down to the earth so what nasa did is that for them to knit these wires they hired a lot of women who were experts at knitting sweaters right so if you'll see how nicely they have knitted all these wires here when they first started they were using those ibm computers they were huge from all that foyer james what the telescope uh, anyone everyone familiar with that yep. yep yep so we just launched it very recently and before we well, did, space it crash a but that's pretty much it. Um, because NASA has a huge campus, it has variety of animals that roam around, including a lot of rodents. And because of that, there are variety of snakes that also roam around on this campus. So you have to be really careful. Dr. Steven Robinson is a doctor of mechanical engineer and an astronaut. So very cool person there. So Dr. Steven Robinson was one of the only astronauts to do an impromptu spacewalk. So this is the Hall of Fame walk where all these astronauts' pictures are there and they are all signed by those astronauts. So if you recognize this person, Neil Armstrong, the first person ever to land on the moon, his picture is also there and it is signed well along with it. And Buzz Aldrin was the second person to land on the moon. All of these brave men and women took on those risks to chase their dreams. We have these plaques here for them. So at NASA, they don't really like to say they lost anyone to space flight. They like to say these people are still on mission. So you'll often hear them referred to as being on an eternal mission. If the International Space Station is compressed to 144 times lower, then this is the size it would look like. And this is such a complex and impressive machinery. That thing is made of 24 karat gold. This suit weighs 200 pounds. Uh, With all those. 200 like, pounds. Uh, the way it is called Polaroid glasses is called gold so Polaroid. This is the whole face so mask. The, the face cover is made of 24 karat gold. So the 24 karat gold protects you from harsh sunlight in the space. So the space suits are in two colors, white when you are in space because it reflects maximum light away from you so that you can be identified and seen well. However, when you are returning to the earth, orange suit is preferred because if you fall in ocean, the orange color contrasts with the color of the water the most and you can easily be found. So this is a space toilet? Yeah. Interesting. 
So the way the toilet works is the hole is for solid waste and that blue hose is going to be for any liquid waste and it has a vacuum compartment that will suck anything down. So you see the blue hose and then it has the funnel, that's what you put up to your anatomy and they have a different funnel for each astronaut, don't worry guys, sanitary. <laughs> and the females would use the same? The females would use a funnel that's more of a U shape okay, versus a circle. Saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, how? That's not going to work. But on space, in space remember I said um, heat does not rise, there's no conduction or convection. So all the heat actually stays trapped down around the fire and you get this really cool ball. This is the old mission control. This is the place from where all the NASA missions were handled, including the moon mission. Approximately six hours after Eagle landed safely on the moon, the flight controllers prepared to receive the first television transmission from Tranquility Base. Along with billions around the world, we watched in suspense as a man from Earth prepared to take the first step on another celestial body. All right, so I'm just pointing out who is on the ISS right now. So we have seven astronauts there. Hopefully you'll be able to see at least one of them once we go in. So the three at the bottom went up on the Russian Soyuz capsule. It was three Russians and one American. And these four here went up on the SpaceX Dragon capsule, three Americans and one Russian. So just so you have some faces, familiar faces. But we're going to go ahead and go in. Two so that was the old mission control where moon landing was being shown. And now this is the new modern current mission control where International Space Station is being monitored live from NASA in Houston. All right, so everyone, welcome to Current Mission Control. This is our current Houston. So we are manning the ISS out of this room. There is a surgeon who is always in touch with the astronauts. And there is the flight director right here who controls the whole system. And there are different departments. So Artemis 1 that we're doing is going to go around the moon. It's actually going to go past the moon about 38,000 miles. We're doing that to do experiments because when we have the Gateway, which is going to replace the space station, the space station orbits the Earth right now. Gateway is going to orbit the moon. When it does, it's going to be a very big orbit. So it's going to go out as far as 38,000 miles. It's very far. So it's actually going to go out, um, it's going to orbit the back and then come really close on the other side of the orbit. They call it heliocentric orbit. So different from the ISS which just goes in a perfect circle. Yeah. So we're going to do that. So once we get back there, we're going to be doing a bunch of experiments. And that's this is Sonny Carter training facility named after the astronaut Sonny Carter. He is an amazing character. He was pursuing his bachelor's degree in chemistry. At the same time, he was a professional soccer player. And then he went to medical school. And when he finished his medical school, he went to US Navy and he was a surgeon at the US Navy. Now, while serving as a surgeon, he saw how cool fighter pilots were. So he decided to become a fighter pilot himself. And then he became a top gun fighter pilot, which is the top 1% of all the Navy pilots. And then he was not satisfied. He saw that there were people who were training to be astronauts. Then he decided to become an astronaut and he became an astronaut for NASA. And then unfortunately he died in a flight crash. And in his memory, this place is named Sonny Carter Training Facility. Area. This is where they prep everything to go in and out of the pool. So if you look right there, that's actually an Orion capsule. So that's the capsule we're going to be going back to the moon in. They have that capsule there to, for the astronauts to practice getting in and out of the capsule, as well as to practice what will happen if they did a water landing, so emergency egress. So they'll just kind of pick um, the capsule up. If you look above you, you see this big yellow crane. So that crane will attach to the capsule and they'll drag it all the way over into the pool. I said each astronaut is going to have six divers to accompany them. And we'll usually have about two astronauts in the pool at one time. So we need a bunch of different school divers for that. So under the water, what we have here is a mock-up International Space Station. 
okay these are all the modules of the ISS and they are all underwater so astronauts go inside those modules okay and then they walk around so what you have here is that uh, International Space Station mock modules are inside the swimming pool okay so uh, when you go inside the swimming pool you go inside a module it looks and feels exactly like how it would be in the, inside the ISS that's so cool so they used to allow people to go right down there but somebody jumped in the pool since then they are not allowing people anymore to go down there we actually have moon rocks down there so we train the astronauts to walk on the surface of the moon right there it's really cool there's even sand down there to simulate like the lunar dust so there was an incident I guess we're not that smart here because we just threw sand overboard into the water and we were just hoping it would sink to the bottom, but it didn't. It just turned into muddy water and like messed up our filtration system. Yeah, it was a whole incident. Uh, it was a whole incident. So eventually they thought of a better way. They decided to use kinetic sand, like the stuff the kids play with that's really squishy, and they put the whole sand back at the bottom, then they opened it instead of just hoping it will float to the bottom. So there's a bunch of sand down there that they walk on. They train very often there. Where are the moon rocks where they can train? Um, I think if you go around, you'll be able to see it better. It's hard to see from here. So this pool is 200 feet long, 100 feet wide, and 40 feet deep. It's a really deep pool. Uh, okay. yeah. We'll help get them out the pool. Launch on November 14th. You won't be able to see it because this top part is actually going to be over it, covering it. And this is going to be the escape system in case anything were to go wrong with the rocket. This top part will pull the crew away from it safely and land them in water. So you'll be able to see there. Yep. So when we went to the moon originally during the Apollo era, our objective was just to get to the moon as fast as possible. And it just happens to be the fastest way to land on the moon is to land on the equator. That's going to be the part that's closer to the Earth and the moon. It's not exactly water, but not exactly ice, so they call it water ice. So when we go down to the South Pole, that's where we're going to be looking for this water. And this is the Artemis mission, which is about to go on the moon. So Artemis 1 will be where it will be automated mission. Only the robots will go. Artemis 2, they will send some animals. And Artemis 3 is when human beings will go in 24, 2025. The whole thing is actually a lunar lander or a prototype of a lunar lander made by Lockheed Martin and Blue Origin, which is going to be Jeff Bezos' company, the Amazon guy. So this lunar lander was in competition with this one back here with these big solar panels you see right there. Um, but this, these guys lost. So you see the limbs are on the ground because it's going to be coming down and out in a little bit. Yep. So right over there, <laughs> that thing everyone's pointing to, that is Robonaut. So Robonaut is a humanoid robot that was on the ISS for a couple of years. Um, one of my astronaut colleagues that I work with, Megan McArthur, she was one of the shuttle era astronauts to actually work with Robonaut. She told me it was very bulky and it got in the way and it caused a lot of problems. So they actually brought him back down here to Earth and they have him on display here. They There's a space shuttle in which all the astronauts will sit. They will be lying down here. So this is the rover that will go on the moon. Okay, and the astronauts will be sitting inside. Robonaut not having any legs. It actually has different attachments for legs and this is one of them. A whole rover is its legs, yeah. So if you look on that picture over there, you'll see Robonaut sitting on it um, out in the graveyard. Well, in the sure. Yeah, so you remember I said he was very bulky? This is a sample of a rocket that will be used for the moon mission. It is difficult to describe just how big this is. Look at the burners in the back and look at the length of this rocket. The reason it is so big is that it carries a lot of weight in space and it is divided into three to four stages. After reaching a certain height, the bottommost component of the rocket is discarded and the remaining portion of the rocket flies. And as you can see on the top is the capsule in which the astronauts are sitting. And this is what a rocket launch looks like. Three, two, one, zero, and lift. 
liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. The Space Shuttle that was attached to the rocket that we just saw, let us take a look at what it looks like from the inside. So here we enter and on our right is the cockpit. This is where the pilot of the Space Shuttle sits and navigates the machine. Looks quite sophisticated, isn't it? To the best of my understanding, the pilots who fly these machines are usually US Air Force or US Navy pilots who became an astronaut. And this is a model of what it would look like on the moon. A small model of the moon rover and the astronaut on the moon. They have even shown how Earth will look like from the moon. NASA in Houston is one really cool place. You should definitely check it out when the opportunity arises.